on each paper has a different part of the airway anatomy epiglottis and one of those is to throw people off to see if they actually paid attention at six echo we are trying to find new ways to communicate and teach and educate people on certain information and skills some people say they're visual learners, some people are hands-on learners. So if we can incorporate more of our senses into our learning experience rather than just sitting and watching a lecture or watching a video, the more senses that we can engage in this learning process, the more likely it is for that student to grasp these concepts and be able to retain this information. Also, if you have information and someone can read and write, and recite verbally that information, those are more senses that we have now engaged in that process of learning that information. So there's a drill that I recently came up with that we did with a class when we did an airway class. The class was supposed to learn anatomy and physiology for the airway. And specifically relating to the anatomy, I wanted them to understand all the different parts of the airway that air has to pass through as it moves into the lungs. So to make this a more interactive experience and give the students a better opportunity to be able to learn some of this airway anatomy rather than just throwing up a PowerPoint and talking about what they've already read, we had a bit of an exercise. And in that exercise, I have a stack of papers that I handed out to each one of them. On each paper has a different part of the airway anatomy and this is all jumbled up I shuffled it well and passed it out to the students and once I pass it out to them their goal was now to form a line stand up move around the classroom get a little blood flowing as well while they're doing this exercise and they have to from the front of the classroom start at the nose and follow or line up in order of which the air is gonna pass as it moves through the airway so we start at the nose we move through the nasopharynx pharynx all the way down through the trachea, bronchi, bronchioles, all the way through to the capillaries where the gas exchange takes place. If you wanted, you could go further past that. If you wanna follow the gas into the bloodstream and down into the cells, you could extend this to incorporate that. But what we are specifically going over was just airway anatomy. So I give these out in a shuffled order and they have to arrange themselves around the classroom. Now. We're going to take something that simulates oxygen and we're going to uh, hand it to one of them to pass around the room or you can simply follow around the room to make sure that this is in order. So not only do they have to understand how the airway is laid out, but now it's a little more interactive. If they get one wrong, so another student may challenge them and say, hey, it's not supposed to go that way, it's supposed to go this way. So it's not only their thought process, but now other people are weighing in opinions, and if they think that they're right, they can counter with that and go back and forth. And now there's a um, discussion on that, and so they're having to defend their point of what goes where and rethink through this whole system of the airway while they're performing this drill. So this drill not only makes them have to recite the different structures of the anatomy, but they're having to think through and troubleshoot the anatomy as they're working through this. And thus there's more exposure now to these specific aspects and they're having a lot more interaction with them and thus they retain the information better. So I have put together a PDF that has all these words on there. Available for download, we'll leave a link down below in the description. Uh, feel free to download that and use that at classes that you're teaching. You can also make your own with different uh, anatomical structures, the circulatory system, it's endless. The ability to get the students up and interacting with one another and figuring out and problem solving these things rather than just sitting and listening to an instructor talk increases their participation and increases the likelihood of them retaining this knowledge. Let me run over briefly what is in the packet here that we have in the PDF. So we start from the nose. You can start from the mouth as well if you want to adjust this. But we start from the nose and we work through the nasopharynx down to the pharynx epiglottis, glottic opening, so on and so forth. Now, you also notice that we have inhalation here. So I had a bunch of students, so I had to make enough of these for everyone to have one. So we also have some that say exhalation. So now we can follow oxygen in the body down to the alveoli and the capillaries and then follow CO2 back out. So now we have this chain that goes all the way around and ends up back at the nose where we started. So 
This is scalable based on how many students you have. If you have a class of 12, you can take the exhalation ones out. I think total we have 23 different pieces of paper here. And one of those is to throw people off to see if they actually paid attention. So esophagus is not part of your airway. It is not, um, it is not part of the structures. There really should be no airway passing that. So this kind of throws them off to make sure that they're actually paying attention. We had a little bit of confusion when they see esophagus and trying to figure out where they're supposed to fit into the system. Well, you're not. So, uh, But if you have one less person, you can omit that one. Uh, you can also, if you have one less person, you can now take the nose and you can stick it at the front of the classroom and say, start here and work your way around. Um, you could also just take one of these out anywhere and just skip over that. Um, if you don't have enough students. So um, you could also give two to each student if you have a real small class and you still want them to understand each part of that. So with this system, it's very easy to scale it based on class size. I hope this drill helps you. And even if you don't use this specific drill or our material, maybe it gives you an idea of ways that you can now improvise and do something for a class you have coming up or to be able to teach a new concept to some other people or students. That's all for this video. As always, stay vigilant and stay safe.